This is the final video, a series of videos on graphing trigonometric functions in radian measure. We're going to be dealing with the cotangent function. If you haven't watched the other ones on the tan, secant, and cosecant functions, I encourage you to take a look. I'm going to use a similar strategy to the one I used in those videos to develop this graph. If you've seen those, you'll know that I'm going to start by writing cotangent as cos over sine. I can do this because cotangent is the same as 1 over tan. I know tan is sine over cos, therefore cotangent is cos over sine. This is going to be helpful because it's going to allow me to do an asymptote and an x-intercept analysis on this function in order to plot the graph of the cotangent function. Looking at this function, I'm going to start by looking at the asymptotes. I know that because sine is in the bottom, if I look at the graph of sine, wherever sine has x-intercepts, i.e. whenever the sine is zero, my cotangent function should have asymptotes because I would have zero in the denominator. And I know that this thing has x-intercepts, graph of sine, at zero, pi, two pi, and so on and so on. And that's going to be very helpful for me. So what I can do is I can graph vertical asymptotes, every pi radians. That's going to help me understand what my cotangent graph looks like. So next thing, if I consider the x-intercepts, just like all the other functions, I'm going to set the entire thing equal to zero and I'm going to try to solve for the value that makes this true. Multiplying sine up to the other side is going to destroy it, and as a result, I'm just solving the equation cos of theta equals zero. So wherever cos of theta equals zero, I'm going to have x-intercepts. Looking at the graph of cos theta, I know it has x-intercepts at pi over two and three pi over two. So as a result, my cotangent graph also has x-intercepts at pi over two, three pi over two, and so on. That's going to continue for negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. Just like all the other functions, I'm going to now consider the cotangent function to be a function in which I can substitute in different values for theta in order to arrive at points on my graph. What I'm going to do is, again, strategically pick points based on special triangles, so pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6, and I'm going to use those theta values because those are easy to compute. I can use special triangles, I can use the unit circle, I can use whatever trig tools I see fit. When I do that, when I sub in values, I'm going to pick on pi over 4, it's a nice angle, I'm going to sub pi over 4 in for theta in cotangent, and I'm going to use the idea that cotangent of theta is 1 over tan of theta. And I know that the tan of pi over 4 is 1, because if I picture that special triangle with pi over 4, I know the opposite side over the adjacent side is 1. So I know that cotangent of pi over 4 is 1 over 1. That's going to allow me to plot this point at 1 here. You can pick strategically other values to sub in, and you'll see that you're going to get a graph that looks like this. I'm not going to go through all of them for the sake of time in this video. That pattern is going to reoccur as I sub in values on either side of my vertical asymptotes. So in the end, you get a graph that looks like this. It's just using that idea that we can write the reciprocal ratio, we can check the asymptotes, check the x-intercepts, and then we can just sub in different values for theta that are easy to compute. Thanks for watching these videos. I'm going to link a few of the other ones to this one. Check out graphic tan, cosecant, secant, and as usual, thanks for watching. Hey. Hey. Hey.